Thanks, everyone. Okay. So apparently I'm going to drive with a mouse, which means I can only drive forward, which will be good because we don't have that much time. So uh, this project, this presentation is about how to join OSGO for projects, but it's a lie. This is really about how to join OSGO for project teams because, as we all know, open source is made up of people. Um, so I'm Jody Garnett. I'd just like to thank my employer, Geocat, for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, in the open source world, I volunteer with a number of different groups. I work with a couple projects. Uh, I do a couple roles at the OSGO uh, Spatial Foundation and the Eclipse Foundation. And I'm Tom Corlitas, um, a long-time contributor to, uh, to Phosphor-G, uh, an open source software as well as uh, international uh, standards. So on the open source side, I, I'm involved in uh, a few projects, and my main interest is uh, data exchange, discovery, and uh, search and dissemination. Thanks, Tom. So uh, the Open Source Geospatial Foundation has a, has a mission, has a vision. And I just want to talk a little about, about how that applies to software projects and software teams and how we realize this goal when we, uh, when, well, when we help people do open source. So we're a not-for-profit software foundation. We provide assistance to projects and project teams. We do outreach and advocacy, so events like Phosphor-G you see here today. And one thing to keep in mind is that we're volunteer-driven, so we're a membership of individuals from all around the world. Um, yeah, so we're responsible for supporting a great collection of projects, and we're going to talk a little bit today about how we look to foster new talent and, uh, and new teams. So the first thing we want to do uh, for software projects is actually tell the world about them. So we've got a lovely uh, OSGO website, and it's got a, a discovery wizard where people can come and see what projects are available and see what tools are available to help them. So that's primarily the role of the marketing committee. Um, and then there's also local chapters and geo for all which does academic outreach. And on the incubation committee, we've got this project list and uh, a choose a project. Um, so that's one of the ways we help projects is uh, adding them to our website. So there's this project list where you can explore what's available. And we, you can use that to discover lovely projects like PyGeo API, which you see here. And there's this choose a project page where you can go through and explore using different topics to see what technologies are available. So in order to be added to our website, um, it's kind of like one of these amusement park rides. We need you to meet a couple requirements. So the first thing is we ask you to be geospatial. The second thing is we ask you to be open source. And the, the last thing we ask is we want you to be open to participation with others. So um, that kind of matches our values as a foundation. So are you geospatial? Are you doing mapping, uh, location, uh, mapping and cartography, drones, something? Um, one, some examples that don't meet this requirement is if you're like a community mapping pro uh, website, you might be more of an open data project rather than an open source project. Um, another interesting one is if you're a software as a service, you're really inter interested in building a community of users rather than a community of developers. Um, for open source, we ask that, you, that your license is one of the ones approved by the open source initiative. So it has a little symbol there. So examples are things like uh, GPL or AGPL, BSD and so on. If your technology has like an end user license agreement or an education and research license, you're not a good fit for OSGO. And the participation one is can you play nice with others? So are you doing pull requests? Do you have an issue tracker? Um, counter examples if you might be a perfectly good open source project, but if you have to work for a specific company in order to take part, mm, you're, not, you're not open to working with others. Or we've had examples where companies have asked uh, to be paid in order to review a pull request. That's not a great example of working with others. OK. If you want to be added on the OSGO website, the first thing to do is you email the incubation list. And we're going to want to see examples of 
your readme to, that says you're geospatial, your license that says you're open source, and some kind of contri uh, contribution guide. So in GitHub, that's a contribution MD. Um, and yeah, we'll check that out, and uh, we'll set you up with an OSGO user ID, and there's some examples of how to add yourself to the project, or to the website. I'm going to just pause there. I can't go back. Is there any questions about that? Who here has an open source project that would like to join the website? Excellent. I really look forward to hearing from you this week. I'll be at the GeoCat booth. There'll also be the community sprint on the Saturday, and we'll be happy to set you up. Yep? Hey, I'm kind of here with the R-Spatial platform. Right? We've been Yep. Right? So the question was... So there'll be some time for questions later. I really okay. like taking questions as I go. The question was about R Spatial that has multiple different libraries and how will all that work out? And the answer is you'll talk to us and we'll help, we'll help sort things out. There's lots of projects that combine technologies from all over the place. And as long as it's all open source, or if the core is open source, uh, we'll figure something out. Thank you. Um, so the next one is um, an initiative that was started by the OSGO board maybe five or six years ago called the OSGO Community. So um, this was a chance for new projects that were just being formed. Uh, or innovative projects that wanted to explore a, uh, an idea to have a home at OSGO. So we ask a little bit more from these projects because they're going to actually get the OSGO logo and we actually have some funding and some opportunities to support these projects a little bit more directly. So I think it's only fair that we ask a bit more in return. So these projects, we support them a little bit more with marketing and outreach, community events, code sprints. We actually set up infrastructure and uh, we can even provide some budget and funding if a project wants to work on something like, I don't know, documentation or a code sprint. Um, but we're really focused here on setting up collaborative uh, ideas and opportunities. So this time, we've got the same basic requirements, geospatial, open source, and open to participation but we really want to step it up a notch in each category. So in addition to being to do with mapping, we also want to make sure you've got some user documentation or a website or something, some ability to interact with the public. Are you open source? We want to take it up a level. Not only do you have a license, we actually want you to check your headers. Did you actually apply the license correctly? You know, it's a level of maturity we're asking. Are you open to contributors? We want to step it up a level. Show some collaboration. Show us that you go beyond a policy, that you actually have some history of working with others. Pull requests, pack packages, issue trackers. Maybe you've signed your project up to the OSGO Live distribution. Just something showing you can work with others successfully. And the last one is, oh, I can't go back, is we ask that you have a code of conduct. So, some promise that you will talk to others and be respectful of them. So that's what, that's what we ask. Um, I'm just going to pause there. This is our most popular request. This has been, I've been getting like four or five requests to join the OSGO community uh, program a year. So I just want to take a moment here, um, yeah, and just talk about that. The process is you're going to email the incubation list and ask, um, and we're going to go through and check the README. We're going to check your user docs, your license, your headers, uh, and that kind of thing. We're just going to try and make sure that you are being successful. OK. Any questions? Any feedback, Tom? You did this earlier this year for PyGeo API. Yes, we did this uh, for PyGeo API, which recently got uh, approved as an OSGO project. I'll, uh, I'll talk to it a little bit later on in this presentation. but. Um, it's really important that you have uh, these, kinds of, uh, these kinds of files and this kind of setup in your repository as you move forward to becoming an OSGO project. Yeah. So once a project is applied, uh, we go ahead, we make a motion, uh, we take a couple weeks to vote because our committee is set up on the email list, and then we notify the OSGO board, and they meet monthly and they accept the project into the foundation. 
Um, and then you get a little sticker uh, that says OSGO Community that you can put on your project. And we cross-link you uh, with our, our website just to highlight your success and your commitment. OK, so the last step, uh, and the one that's central to our mission here, is being recognized as a full OSGO project. And this is the core of the Software uh, Foundation. These are the projects, many of which you've heard of already, that make up the, the, the heart of the community that's meeting here this week. Um, and this gets a lot more involved because our community was really nervous at the start of OSGO. We really wanted to accept software that was not only uh, open source, but also excellent, that was stable, that could be trusted, that people could trust with their future and their vision and their information. Um, so a project that's been recognized to know it as an OSGO project is a full committee in the foundation. The project officer um, is actually an officer of the OSGO organization. Uh, the projects are assigned an annual budget, um, and they report you know, directly to the OSGO board, and they take part in an OSGO annual general meeting that will happen at some point this week. So I just want to say that this is an extra level. This is the Software Foundation, the project team, being recognized as um, not only like uh, being accepted into OSGO, they become OSGO. They are the foundation. And the requirements here go up a lot more. So I'm going to talk quickly about this, but then I'm going to hand over things to Tom here, who recently went through this project, this process for his project. Um, yeah, so in addition to is your project open, we want you to have open communication channels, open decision making. Um, yeah, just we want to see you doing a lot of your communication in public uh, and where the public can take part. So we really want to have that central message of open source enabling shared development. Uh, and we want your, the participants in your project to feel that, uh, that sense of being included in ownership. Um, we also check your community. Uh, are you, do you have good communication with your users and developers? Maybe they're collaborating and helping uh, test release candidates and so on. Um, and we really want to see some of that open source social contract in action. So an open source project wants to um, have the developers produce the software, but then we're sharing the risk by having members of the community test the software, provide feedback, bug reports, and so on. We also want to see some evidence of long-term viability, so multiple developers, multiple organizations, and we occasionally we want to see like separate sources of funding. If you've got a whole bunch of different companies supporting a technology, but they're all paid by the same you know, UN group or something, that, you know, it makes the project a little bit of a risk. It makes it a bit, uh, bit brittle. So we look a little bit more into the business model that's supporting this. Uh, yeah. Uh, in addition to the open source license and checking the headers, we actually want to look into the history of the source code. Where did you get it from? Did the person agree to contribute it to you? You know, we really want to see kind of that code providence review. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to move a little bit more quickly here. For the development process, we want to see uh, some evidence of good software development, uh, things like release schedules and tests and quality assurance. Um, for the development process, we also want to see some evidence of good governance. Are you making decisions as a team? Okay. Um, also, for being open to uh, development, in addition to just documenting your project, we also want it to be really friendly to new developers. We'd like to see enough detail for an experienced developer to actually come in and contribute a fix. We also want to see enough of your processes documented that a volunteer could come in and make a new release of your software. OK. So how does the incubation process work? So first of all, we add to the website. Then you become a community project. And then you apply to join the incubation program. Um, and one of the things we do is we hook you up with a mentor. So another software professional that's a member of the OSGO community and it can help you and your team learn the ropes. 
Um, there's a graduation checklist, which the mentor can help your team go through. Um, one thing that's really important here is the mentor can actually help you through some of the issues that can't necessarily be talked about in public. So things like license conflicts or legal troubles. OSGO can back you with access to legal support and so on. And you know my projects have made use of that a number of different times. So not everything is, is, is public. We realize that uh, teams uh, run into considerable challenges and need assistance. Um, once the team's gone through and met our requirements, the mentor is going to make a motion um, that, the, that the project is ready. And once that motion goes ahead, we let the board know. And the board welcomes everybody to the, everybody to the team. OK. One thing that I've noticed is that many open source projects enter incubation. And we really just want you to document how your team works today. And the teams take this as an opportunity to say, well, how do we work? And then they're like, oh, wait, we could work better. And then they take years to graduate because they're changing everything. So um, incubation, you can be inspired. That's great. But you don't actually have to change everything and do everything perfectly. Um, so a lot of the projects take years to graduate just because they're, they're having a good time. Yeah. Over to you, Tom, for some case studies. Great. Thanks, Jody. Um, at this point, thanks. At this point, I'll walk through some case studies of, uh, of projects that I've been involved in that have, uh, that have become OSGO projects. So there's two in particular. One is uh, PyCSW, and the other one is PyGeo API. So they, uh, they're, uh, uh, they're both Python projects that do specific things, but they, uh, they have some, uh, some uh, they had a different road to becoming a, a, an OSGO project. So one thing, I'll, before I start with the projects, I'll say that you know, working in public is an important first step to uh, helping establish a community and, uh, um, and having that open communication and, and moving the project forward to one day having you know, governance and becoming an OSGO project. So with, with that, I'll start with the PyCSW project. So we, the project is, was initiated in late 2010. And um, in 2013, we entered uh, incubation, and it took almost two years by the time we uh, uh, by the time we graduated. So you can see the timeline there. Um, there's a number of contributors, and there's a number of downstream applications. So the project, because it's a library, um, is used in a lot of downstream applications, which uh, I'll talk to a little bit later in terms of some of the uh, implications around that with regards to. Um, communications and uh, and usage and and support and sustainability. So we, we in PyCS uh, CSW when we entered in incubation, we started to track all the incubation style issues in uh, in our in our GitHub setup. Um, we also set up contribution agreements. So we had to go back to all of the source code and and look at who all the contributors were and get them to sign off explicitly. Um, that they that they uh, that they agree to the contribution ag ag uh, agreement, and then in that process, we actually created a template for pull requests that uh, allows uh, the allows the, the contributors to check that off right away, so we don't have to go back uh, all the time. And that's a requirement for submitting. So that was a valuable uh, exercise that we went through, which resulted in a, a much easier way to manage contribution uh, agreements. Provenance review, looking for source code headers and uh, and so on. Um, there's we, we implemented scripts to do that, so it, it was we have a lot of uh, we had a lot of source code, so we implemented scripts to look through all the source source code, look for uh, headers and and document any uh, any issues. And that's one thing that I wanted to m maybe outline here is that um, not everything has to be perfect to become an OSGO project, but you do want to show what your community is doing right now to be able to uh, um, demonstrate the, uh, the, the state of things. So never, uh, there is no mag magnum opus. There is, it's always evolving, it's always iterative, but it's important, uh, it's important to realize that. Because some of you might, some people might say, like I used to say, well, un until we get every single thing done, we're not gonna apply for graduation. And one thing that I learned is that it's not really about that, it's more like, as a uh, your project being a, a, in, as a continuum, we documented everything. Two minutes. Two minutes. Oh boy. 
okay, we documented everything uh, and we have a healthy, set, uh, healthy governance, let me just carry on. I will stress that producing OSS is probably one of the best uh, pieces of reading that I've done and even after 20, 25 years in this, uh, in this environment, I still read it uh, probably on a monthly basis and I'm always learning new things from it, so I would highly recommend it. Some challenges, one challenge we had was uh, with community and, and communication. So back then, there, the, the single measure was the mailing list, and we found that a lot of communications were happening on IRC and other, other means. And the other thing was standalone application versus downstream. A lot of the communications were happening in the downstream application community as opposed to our core ones. So we really had to articulate what that meant when we applied for graduation. Quickly, uh, Paiju API, comparatively, this, comparatively this, looked less, this took less than half of the time because uh, by nature, when we uh, uh, started the project, we, we had OSGO graduation in mind. So it was built for OSGO project status from the start, and that's why uh, things went relatively uh, quickly. We just graduated a few days ago, so I'm very happy to, uh, happy to announce that. So thank you to everybody who uh, supported that. Again, uh, Fogel is a very key piece of reading for that. We had everything, everything in place right from the uh, first source code commit which really helped us, and we used basically the exercise that we did in PyCSW as a, as a lesson learned. So I think this is a really um, uh, interesting exercise to show that it is, it is possible, and I, showed, I tried to show two different projects, one, uh, one which took two years, one which took you know, uh, less, uh, less than a year, to show that it can really be done, and um, uh, working in the open is an, is an important first step to becoming part of the OSGO eco ecosystem, which is, which is a very strong value proposition when people see an OSGO project and it has a stamp of approval. Um, so I would highly recommend it in terms of uh, uh, wanting to take your software to the next step. That's it from me and thank you uh, to everybody for their time and thank you for listening. Thank you.